thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you uh, very much for all of you. Um, so I'm going to tell you about um, my research on the advanced bot landscape. Uh, so uh, before that, uh, I give you a short introduction about myself. So I am security researcher at Imperva. I've been researching for four years in the field of cybersecurity. I spent the major part of my time analyzing malwares, and more recently, I started to work on web application security. So more specifically, I analyzed advanced bot ecosystem. I tried to understand their behavior, if there are ways to detect them, ways to block them. So this is the agenda of the session today. So first of all, uh, we will explore together the advanced bot ecosystem. Then I will present to you the internal structure of one, ex uh, one advanced bot that I picked. And lastly, I will show you a few evasion techniques uh, that I spotted and detection that we can uh, imagine for that. Um, so first of all, uh, definition about bots. So bots are softwares that are automating actions on the internet. So you have good bots, for example, uh, the Google bot that's scrolling the internet and uh, in order to improve its uh, search engine. And you have malicious bots, uh, for example, uh, vulnerability scanners that are scanning all uh, servers uh, available on the internet in order to search for vulnerable ones. The main difference between the two is the consent of the server of being targeted by those bots. Um, so bot markets uh, is a huge. Uh, just to give you like uh, an example, so I'm talking about malicious bot markets. So uh, scal ticket scalping market is worth uh, uh, more than eight billion dollars. This was like uh, measured in uh, 2017. Uh, you have today a uh, Discord channel of uh, bot resell that uh, include more than uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, members. And in the measurement of 2020, uh, it was uh, evaluated that a quarter around of uh, all internet traffic was the fact of uh, malicious bots. And among that, uh, more than half of it, 57%, was the fact of advanced bots. So what do we mean exactly by advanced bots? So we have a few things in mind. First of all, we think about headless browsers. So um, headless browser is a technology that enable the rendering of web content almost the same way as a real browser would do. Uh, for example, uh, Puppeteer or Selenium are able to do that. Uh, we think about the rotation between anonymous proxies. Most of the time, they will be re residential one because they are more difficult to detect. And lastly, we think about advanced anti-detection mechanisms, for example, the ability to mimic human behavior during the solving of CAPTCHA. So what's the purpose of advanced bots? So advanced bots can be used for carding, the fact of uh, checking uh, credit card numbers found on the dark web, and test it against the e-commerce website to check if they are valid or not. Uh, credential stuffing, the fact of uh, taking combo list of username and passwords, found also on the dark web or anywhere, and test it against a large range of uh, e-commerce websites in order to find a match. Scalping, the fact of purchasing a large amount of um, uh, uh, limited edition item from e-commerce website in order to resell them later at a higher price on uh, resale markets. Um, so this damages the uh, target website, the reputation of the target website, and also uh, generates a loss of their revenues in the long term because it will generate frustration on their customers. Denial of inventory, the fact of making an e-commerce website almost unusable via, the, for example, the massive usage of dummy cards, etc., etc. So here uh, I took a small video uh, I, um, I picked on YouTube. So scalping has become so popular that it has become a kind of sport. And this guy is a streamer of this uh, sport. So he's using two different bots, uh, pretty famous, called uh, Cyber.io and Torubot, to target one specific release of uh, limited edition items on one specific website. And you can see that in the left side, uh, green lines, meaning that the scalping operation was successful. On the right side, um, you have only black lines, so each of the lines correspond to a scalping task. And it means that it was uh, non-successful. And actually, if you zoom in, you will see that it, the security vendor blocked the transaction. So you can see here in real time the bypass of the security vendor. 
and this was only like less than a year ago. So this is a, a real current challenge for security vendors to block those kind of softwares. So one of the challenges I was confronted to during this research was to find the executables of those bots. Because uh, often uh, the bots are uh, out of stock in their websites. Sometimes even they are not available on the result market. And bot developers are very supportive with the binaries of the bots. They will not share it with everyone. They will try to make sure that you are indeed a customer. Uh, so th because there are so many uh, bots uh, out there, it's a uh, it's a bit difficult to, to do this and to, uh, and to find the, 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 the files of the bots. So these are a few sources that um, I used that helped me in this research. First of all, general hacking website. For example, hack forums, hack.io, null.2, uh, food store crew. So these contain uh, many malwares, uh, but not only. You can find uh, scalpers, scrappers, vulnerability scanners, etc., etc. Um, uh, some type of uh, botting, uh, for example, uh, scalping has become so popular that you have um, dedicated marketplaces for a specific type of attacks, for example, uh, uh, ticket bots or uh, sneaker bots, etc., etc. Uh, sometimes uh, I was able to find the source piece of source code of bots in GitHub, uh, archives containing large set of vulnerability scanners on uh, 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 nanon files, or even sometimes behind misconfigured server. I was able to find the, the binaries of, uh, I mean, the executables of, uh, of uh, an advanced bot. So using all of those techniques, I was able to generate a repository of around 40 advanced bots. And from that, what we wanted to know is the statist uh, are the statistics. I mean, what type of bots do we have here? What are the, the technologies behind? And uh, are we able to uh, track a few efficient techniques that we may uh, uh, use later to detect them? So uh, yes, uh, first of all, 45% uh, of them were using Electron Framework. Um, behind that, um, uh, the headless browser technology uh, was mostly uh, dominated by Puppeteer. Around 40% of them were using Puppeteer. But we could see many other types of um, a headless browser, for example, uh, Playwright, Selenium, Essential Objects, also .NET Browser, etc. So now let's look at the internal structure of an advanced bot. So I took the example of Project Destroyer. So it was worth around uh, $1,000, uh, something like a bit more than, than a year ago. It's a scalping bot. And it's a good example because most of the components it contains are in most advanced bots that um, I collected. So this is what we can find inside. So you have several components. Uh, the main component here is the headless browser. Uh, usually uh, with a, a module in order to increase its capacity to evade detection. Here, in, in this case, it was Puppeteer, uh, plus uh, a Puppeteer extra plugin stealth um, module in order to make it even harder to detect. And you have an evasion, uh, additional evasion module next to it. It's usually behind a folder called scripts or utils, and it contains the list of functions the bot uh, developer wrote in order to make it harder to detect, either by the website, vulnerable website, and the security vendor. Then you have the module, uh, profile management module. This is responsible for storing the billing information about um, the, the attacker, uh, password, etc. Uh, proxy management module, responsible for storing the proxy list provided by the attacker uh, to check if they're valid or not, to measure the speed and order them accordingly. You have a cookie jar. So most of the time, uh, 24 hours before uh, the scalping task, uh, the attacker will generate valid cookies for the target website. Uh, and then during the scalping operation, he will consume them. So he will use this interface in order to do that. Uh, then you have the CAPTCHA module management module. So it will be responsible uh, for uh, uh, capturing the CAPTCHA uh, provided by the security vendor send it to an external service, for example, uh, uh, CapMonster, retrieve the answer, and on the client side, solve the CAPTCHA. Uh, OK, and lastly, you have the, OK. Uh, OK, and lastly, you have the operation module. So most of the, most of the time, for each of the target uh, websites, you will have one folder with all of the steps. Uh, for example, uh, click on this specific form, uh, fill this. Uh, um, data, etc. 
and uh, do the purchase operation. Uh, in this case, you have the 37 folder, one per each target. Um, so if we drill down into one specific uh, operation, most of the time you start the headless browser with an uh, additional um, evasion feature. Uh, then you craft plausible device uh, in order to, to look like a real device connecting to the website. Uh, then you will pick a proxy from your proxy list, pick a pre-generated cookie uh, from the list that you had, and then monitor the price of the, device, uh, of the, of the product that you want to scalp in a loop. If at some point in time the price is below a certain threshold, the threshold that you set, uh, then it will perform the purchase operation. When the captcha is provided, it will be solved by the external solution. Uh, and then uh, on the client side, it will be solved as well by the captcha management module. OK. So now let's look at a few evasion techniques and the ways that we can detect them. So first of all, it's not an evasion technique. Just something to mention. It's code uh, protection. So here it was JavaScript. So the code was quite uh, uh, badly obfuscated. Uh, all strings, etc., was not uh, were not readable, and even if you try to execute it this way, it will just crash, because the code itself, at some point, measure if you made some modification, if you created new lines at some uh, places, it will just uh, uh, detect it and crash. So uh, once we're able to detect uh, this uh, feature and bypass the, the evasion, we're able to spot new tricks uh, in this uh, in this bot. So one of the way that the bot developer uh, used in order to make the bot uh, hard to detect was to append uh, non-mandatory HTTP headers to the requests that it's sending uh, each time. And it was like randomly pick some of those HTTP headers. For example, here we can see the RTT set to 15, which is like the wrong uh, time trip between a client to server to a 50 millisecond. Uh, this is non-mandatory data, and this may, may the device look like uh, this make the request uh, look like it's as if it was coming from a slightly different device each time. Okay, uh, another way uh, that uh, another thing that we discovered in this bot, uh, it was faking device attributes uh, in a r randomized way. So each time you create a new, new task, uh, the device was slightly modifying uh, its. Uh, uh, appearance. For example, um, the weight, the height of the device was uh, each time uh, modified okay, by this function, the uh, get random value. Uh, so between like 1000 and uh, 1600 pixels. But here there is an issue in this code uh, because the avail height, avail height is uh, supposed to be constant uh, for a specific device. So here because it's taking random values between 1000 and 1600, you will find values that uh, doesn't exist in any device on the planet. So this way, you can spot unlegitimate traffic. Last uh, but not, not the least, there was a module uh, that was uh, used in order to simulate a uh, human uh, simulated mouse curve. So I'm not sure if it's possible to, to see it from, uh, from the back, but you have like beautiful curves generated by the, um, by the module of the bot based on the busy uh, functions. Um, so we can see the acceleration, the deceleration, and uh, okay, the curvature. So it's pretty well done. But if we zoom in, we can see that it's, um, uh, it's too smooth. Uh, so what we may want to do is to, to check if there are ways to detect it. So we just uh, compute the distribution of the acceleration of this curve. And this is what we obtain. So we have the average of open one pixel per uh, millisecond square. Uh, and uh, we can see that the maximum is uh, open uh, uh, 15 uh, pixel per millimeter, millimeter square. And when we perform an experiment on ourselves uh, with several people, etc., and s several amount of times, this is more or less the, the chart that we obtain. The average is a bit higher, around open two pixel per millimeter square. But most importantly, there are much more outliers there. So, which means that uh, it's much uh, less smooth uh, when it's uh, when the, the the mouse motion is performed by a human. So, the question is not if we can detect uh, the usage of this uh, bot using this technique. Uh, it's only how much time do we need to be accurate enough in our detection. So now let's uh, 
have a few uh, key takeaways for uh, this session. So first of all, the malicious bot market uh, is uh, very large, as we saw, and expanding. Uh, second, uh, there is a predominance of uh, Electron framework, and Puppeteer used as a headless browser technology. And lastly, it's a cat and mouse game. Bots are always improving their techniques, and we need to track their evolution in order to be able to um, improve uh, and continue blocking them. Uh, but the fact of knowing their, the bot um, a source code is a great advantage. So that's it. Are there any uh, questions? Um, so this is actually what's, wor uh, what's happening for a uh, CAPTCHA solving solution. So most of them, they provide an API, and then you're sending the, the CAPTCHA to this API and sending you the, the outputs. Um, most of the, um, so sometimes you have also some logic where um, the, 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 you have like a client that contains, um, I mean, some functionalities, but then in order to uh, obtain some uh, specific attributes, uh, like for example, especially for anti, uh, anti some spe against some specific uh, security vendors, uh, it's querying its own server and sending you back the security cookie of the security vendor. So as at some point, the logic is split between client and the, the server of the bot developers. Uh, this is at least uh, what I saw uh, so far. Yes? Um, so, um, uh, I said earlier that there are Discord channels containing uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, members. So, I mean, people are using those bots uh, in order to make money. So, there are, I mean, uh, people like you and me that are downloading those bots in order to attack uh, e-commerce e websites. So, I mean, th yeah, this is, um, th this is a bit weird to, to, to tell this, but yeah, there, there are hundreds of thousands of people that's uh, attacking uh, constantly uh, so some websites. Uh, okay, uh, thank you.